Okay, so welcome to this next video uh, on uh, store operated calcium entry. So, we have now seen the problem. When we release calcium from the intracellular stores to cause a calcium puff uh, in the cytoplasm, most of the calcium is going to be returned back into the endoplasmic reticulum by the sarco endoplasmic reticulum calcium ATPase. But some is going to be removed from the cytoplasm by uh, this plasma membrane-associated calcium ATPase, this PMCA uh, pump. That's going to mean that afterwards, after everything's finished, there's going to be less calcium in the endoplasmic reticulum than there was uh, before you started. And that's a problem, because if we kept that up, eventually we wouldn't be able to do the calcium signaling anymore, because we'd have too little calcium left in our endoplasmic reticulum. Now, how do we solve this problem? Well, we need to bring calcium back in from the extracellular fluid back in to the uh, ER lumen, basically. And the way uh, we start this is that we need a protein in the ER membrane to detect that calcium is too low, basically. Okay, so there is such a protein in the ER membrane, and this protein is known as STIM1, which, uh, which stands for Stromal Interaction Molecule 1. So let me draw it out for you first before I annotate its name on here. So it has a membrane-spanning topology, like so. It has a single membrane-spanning domain, like this, and on the ER luminal side, it has an EF hand domain, so a calcium sensing domain. So this looks very hopeful. Here's the EF hand domain. Okay, so this is on the ER lumen side. Right. Okay, then what it has is it has a, um, a region known as the acidic region here. Okay, so this is an acidic region. And then it has another region known as the channel activating domain, which is very important, so there, that's what we'll draw there. Then it has uh, another region which is negatively charged, and then finally it has a polybasic tail here. Right, so let me label this all up. This is the polybasic tail. Now what does it mean that it's polybasic? Well, um, basically it means that it contains a lot of amino acids which are basic groups, have basic R groups, which means that they like to accept protons. It's the opposite of an acid. It's an alkali, as we once have called it. They like to receive protons. Now, if you have a neutrally charged amino acid, which then receives a proton, what that is going to do is it's going to make it positively charged. And that becomes important. So, really, what this is, is a lot of positively charged um, amino acids. Okay, so it has this region which is positively charged. Okay, so let me add a bit of colour onto this. So this is the polybasic tail in pink here, which is positively charged. So I'll try and emphasise that. This positive. Oh no, it's gone horrendously wrong. Okay, so the next bit down then, this portion is the complete opposite. It's negatively charged, and that's all we need to know about that region. It's negatively charged. And we're going to see how this region is important later. It's basically important for stopping store-operated calcium entry if calcium levels inside uh, the cytoplasm are toxically high, because you don't want store-operated calcium entry to be on if calcium inside the cytoplasm is already dangerously high. I don't, basically, the cell doesn't care if calcium is too low in the ER. If calcium in the cytoplasm is dangerously high, you don't want store-operated calcium entry to be on. Okay, next domain down. This next domain is really important. This is called the channel activating domain, or CAD for short. So this is the channel activating domain. Channel activating domain, or CAD for short. Activating domain. Right, okay, and that's the portion that is going to actually interact with, um, the, uh, uh, with the calcium channel in the plasma membrane and cause it to open. Okay, so at the moment this is in the ER membrane, so this is the ER membrane. So basically, uh, if I go back to my picture of the cell, we are looking at another protein that is sitting in this ER membrane. So I'll draw it on here. 
basically this stim protein is sitting like that, basically. That's that same picture that I've drawn here. It's sitting like that in the ER membrane. Right, okay, so this portion is all on the cytoplasmic side, okay. So it's more than plausible that this channel activating domain is going to be able to uh, contact uh, the plasma membrane because look the plasma membrane is here so it can if it's on the cytoplasmic side then it can contact the uh, plasma membrane and it can forge contacts with um, uh, channels in the plasma membrane okay so this is the cytoplasmic side right okay next portion we'll look at uh, this portion down here and this basically is what's known as the acidic region okay so this blue region that I've drawn here is an acidic region and that's basically the exact opposite of the polybasic tail that we looked at before it basically contains a huge number of amino acids which are acidic residues acidic residues like to throw away their protons they like to donate their protons and in so doing they themselves will gain a negative charge so this region is very negatively charged basically okay right and this entire protein is known as the STIM1 protein, uh, which stands for um, Stromal Interaction Molecule 1. Stromal Interaction Molecule 1. Okay, and what we now need to see is how, um, what is going to happen uh, when uh, calcium goes down in the ER, basically. And how is STIM1 going to help us? Okay, so this EF hand, which we have on the uh, intracell, well, intraluminal uh, side of our membrane, so this EF hand is the portion of uh, STIM1, which is on the ER lumen. Now, an EF hand is a calcium-sensing domain, so this domain can bind calcium. Okay, so when it's got calcium bound to it, that shows us that calcium level in the ER is high. So if calcium level in the ER is at its correct level, there will be calcium bound to this EF hand. Okay, and when calcium is bound to this EF hand, STIM1, or the stromal interaction molecule 1, will be in this conformation that I have drawn here. Now, if calcium goes down in the, um, in the ER lumen, then what's going to happen is it's going to mean that calcium is no longer bound to this EF hand, so this calcium ion goes, basically, and that's going to cause a change in the conformation of this STIM1 protein, and I will show that on the next piece of paper. Okay, so basically, what happens, in fact, I just need to have this diagram to show you what happens. What's going to happen is that this interaction between the channel activating domain and this acidic region here, uh, which is causing the protein to sort of fold in this way, that is going to cleave basically when calcium falls off the EF hand. So when there's no calcium bound to the EF hand, indicating that calcium levels in the ER are too low and that we need to activate store operated calcium entry, it's going to change the conformation of STIM1, and the way in which it's going to change the conformation of STIM1 is it's going to stop this binding between the acidic region and the channel um, activating domain. And what will happen is the whole thing will straighten out, and you now have an exposed channel activating domain. Okay, so let me show this. So, if this is the ER membrane here, so this is the ER membrane, okay? Uh, then uh, the STIM1 protein will now look like this. So here is its EF hand domain, which now has no calcium bound to it. So the calcium has um, calcium is no longer bound to it because the calcium level has gone down so much in the EF hand. Uh, sorry, in the ER lumen. Right. You then have this uh, this um, acidic region here, which we coloured in blue previously. So this is the acidic region. Okay, and now it's no longer bound in that way to the um, channel activating domain. So the channel activating domain is linearly above the acidic region. So this is the channel activating domain, channel activating domain, uh, which we previously colored in, I believe, orange, channel activating domain. But let me just check that before I ruin my picture. Yes, we did. So this is the channel activating domain here in orange. And uh, this is the acidic region here. And then we had two regions above that, 
one which was uh, negatively charged. So here's that negatively charged region, and that's responsible, remember, for turning off the activation of store-operated calcium entry if, um, if calcium in the cytoplasm is too dangerously high. And then finally, above that, you have the polybasic tail here. Okay, so let me colour these in. So this is the polybasic tail here, and this is the, um, uh, the negatively charged region here. Okay, so uh, this is the polybasic tail up here. Right, so polybasic tail, which has a positive charge, basically. And this was that negatively charged region responsible for uh, the negative, the, uh, negative regulation of store-operated calcium entry if calcium in the cytoplasm is too high. Now, basically, what happens is when, uh, when uh, calcium in the ER goes too low and it triggers this change in the structure of STIM1, what happens is that STIM1 starts to aggregate in the ER membrane. So... Um, if we draw a whole cell here, let's say this is our whole cell, and this is our ER, um, our ER here, so our endoplasmic reticulum here, so this is the ER, right, okay, now what's going to happen is that loads of these STIM1 proteins are going to start aggregating because they no longer have uh, calcium bound to their EF hand domain down here, so this is our EF hand domain. Now, I'm not going to draw each, um, each STIM1 protein out like this. Instead, I'm just going to represent each one as this rectangle. So, uh, this down here, this intraluminal portion, refers to this EF hand down here. And these cytoplasmic regions refer to this portion up here. So, you get loads of STIM1 proteins all aggregating together like so. So, these are stromal interaction molecule 1 all aggregating together. STIM1 aggregates. Okay, and basically this STIM1 aggregates are going to, um, are going to, they're going to uh, activate a channel in the membrane, basically, that allows calcium to enter the cytoplasm from the extracellular fluid. Now, the first thing to say is that uh, this poly uh, basic tail up here, which we've discussed, acquires a positive charge. That is very helpful for the STIM1 protein because if you think about what this membrane here is, this membrane is a phospholipid bilayer, so let's just draw a bit of it out. So it's basically made up of a double layer of phospholipids. Now, the outer facing portion of a phospholipid, this portion here, which is facing the cytoplasm, that is polar. And these are phosphate groups facing the cytoplasm. So they have a negative charge on them, okay? So, these negatively charged phosphate groups are going to like the positively charged polybasic tail, basically. So, what happens is that the polybasic tails of these STIM1 proteins interact very nicely uh, with the phospholipid bilayer, and that's what sort of um, pulls the STIM1 protein towards the phospholipid bilayer. And then what's going to happen is it's going to interact with a protein, namely a calcium channel, in the phospholipid bilayer. And we'll continue this discussion in the next video.